Hey, how's it going? Hope you're doing great. If not, as always, I hope it gets better for you. So today, I'm going to take you with me to Oddball Aquatics, which some of you guys may know her. It's Haley. But anyways, this video is really cool. A lot of interesting fish. She definitely holds up to the name Oddball Aquatic. We're going to see some rare puffers breeding. We're going to see some rare killifish, crabs eating fish, big bashirs, babies. We're going to see eggs in a really, 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 really cool, cool rope fish pond. That's like its own tropical jungle natural habitat. So let's check it out. We got a stand from Mabuna Rec Master that I won at the Keystone Clash a while back. And trading Haley this for helping me, it holds two 40 gallon breeders. You ready? Yeah. All right. All right, so I made it to Oddball Aquatics. I'm here with Haley of Oddball Aquatics. She also has a YouTube channel. She helped me out for like almost a year. I have fish. And we're here. Might as well do a fish room tour. He's never seen them before. Yeah, so this is my first time seeing them as well. And from what I've seen, pretty neat, unique, and there's something really, really cool back here. All right, so here we are in the main kind of section of all her tanks. And you want to walk us through what you got here? <clears throat> uh, yeah, sure. This is my big rack that I built, and there's a whole video about building it, which took forever. 55 gallon at the bottom, which has four Bashirs in it. Three of them are Senegalis Bashirs. There's a regular, an albino, and a platinum. And there's also a Delhezi Bashir in there. That's that the stripy one right here. And that's the albino hiding actually in that mop. And the platinum and the regular over here actually breed in that mop. So that's a breathing tank. They need a bigger tank. We're working on that. I need that 150 out of your storage shed. That would be helpful. And then uh, 20 gallon longs, four of them. This is where I breed my plecos. <clears throat> There's always a horde of longfin pressing those plecos in there. I just pulled a whole bunch of them out, actually, like 60 of them, and I'm sure they're going to breed like tomorrow, because then I did a big water change, and that's how you get them to breed. And then, you know, snails. I have a snail problem. And plants. And then this is the albino galaxy guppies. These are my favorite guppies. Ever. And then there's also the Trilinianus quarries in here that I'm breeding. They are back there in the back behind the Huteroid crypts. And there's actually some babies in that hang on the front that is connected to that tank. That is my rainbow tank. That's the LRV tank. That's the Melanotania parva. There's three males in there. I need some females. I'm not sure where to get some. I'll probably figure it out. And then there's Shultai Cory's up there that I got from John Stoller. And then that tank runs no filter. It does have some air because biofilm, but there's still biofilm. It's actually growing in Fusoria at the moment, but that's a good thing because I'm going to use it to feed baby pufferfish. Wags actually good. used to be Rainbow. one of my babies. Every Would have been a cold, but look, he's living his best life. And then that's Blackwater tank that uh, Amber escaped for me, but it is currently empty because the blue galaris were in there and I'm trying to breed them. And I got a tip from somebody to pull them out of there and put them in a shoebox and that they would breed in the shoebox. And that actually worked, so now I have blue galaris eggs, but they're still in the shoebox just to see if they throw any more eggs before I put them back in the tank. So that's the big rag. And then this is my little rack, so that's 20 gallon long that I just set up for my crabs. Those are purple uh, Matano crabs. And I'm gonna try and breed those, but first I gotta figure out how to sex them. I think I've got one too many males. They're kinda, they're digging a hole under there. Now what's your opinion on these crabs? Um, they're jerks. 
Yeah. Yeah, they ate some of my blue diamond tetras. I thought they were oh, really nice. Oh, that's not very nice. No, so now they have their own tank, and I scaped it out all nice for them, and then they dug a big hole in it, and like all the wood moved and everything moved. And as far as like information on you breeding out these quarries and stuff and the bristle nose, I get questions often about breeding bristle nose. Do you have videos for this? Uh, I have some videos of me doing it. I don't necessarily have educational videos because I'm not necessarily an educator. I'm much more of a, this is what I'm doing, maybe if something helps you, I hope it helps you, but live your best life, and, uh... Like, share an experience. Right, sure. like, it's trial and error, most yeah. of our hobby, in my opinion, plus, I like to experiment. I don't know if you saw my last video, but I stuck a rainbow net into a tank, um... I did see that, that was really cool. Yeah, I don't really, yeah. like, do, this is how you should do stuff videos, I do, look at how this works videos. Yeah, because, I mean, there's so many different ways to do it, right? <clears throat> yeah. Sweet. So. 100%. Yeah, and then down there is 10 gallons. Those are my splash tetras. I've been wanting those for forever, and <clears throat> I want to breed them because I want to film them breeding because they jump out of the water to breed, and it's going to be amazing. You should try one of them deli cups, just laying it right up there. Yeah, I know, but I want to I wanna catch them breeding. Work. I want to catch them breeding on the leaf, though. Like okay, so video. why don't you get an Indian almond leaf here and tilt it just right up here? What they'll want to do is they'll want to come up here and then they'll splash up all on it. I want them to jump. I want them to have oh, to jump. Oh, you want them to do it on the lid? Oh, no, on those leaves, on that Brazilian pennywort uh, that's in there. Like jump up on there? Yeah, I guess I could use that, huh? That's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I dropped the water line on this tank so that they'd have room to jump. Now, I talked to Regina Spot here and she said they'd breed on the lid, but I want to see them breed on a leaf. Like, I want the video of them doing it the way they do it in the wild. Yeah, more natural. Yeah. Now, have you have you thought about does this plant come from their habitat or any similar plants that do? Uh, I haven't gotten that far. I, I also work a lot. Yeah, there's, and there's so a lot much of species at work I have to study, and I'm, I just got these like a couple weeks ago, and they just settled in and started acting right because I did have a hang on the back on there, and I don't know if you know, but um, fish don't necessarily like flow and filters, and they like kind of dirty, like natural things. Really? So I turned the filter mm. off after I got them, and they actually like started acting more natural, and you know. I don't, I learned that from the person, <laughs> I don't remember who, but, so yeah, that tank's just kind of settling in from losing its filter and becoming a filterless tank, and yeah. Cool. That's a quarantine tank for the Ornate Bashir, so it's another 10 gallon, and that Ornate Bashir came from a &B Spartan Aquatics, they are awesome and they love to hook me up with weird stuff that I love, because they carry weird stuff and I do like my oddballs. Hence the name, right? Yeah. We're here on this side. Uh, this is my 36 gallon. Currently uh, empty except for one baby uh, Shodentai puffer. So and there may be more in there. I'm still watching it, but this is the tank that the parents bred in and I grew them out in here, but I ended up with a hydro problem. And I don't know if you know this, but hydro will kill baby fish pretty, pretty effectively. And I also can't treat for the hydro while the babies were in there. So it was just kind of a waiting game to see who made it. You didn't want to risk it. Yeah. So now I've got him or her, not sure, caught. They're going to go in another tank. The parents are actually set to breed any day now because they breed about every 20 days. So hopefully they'll breed out in this tank this time, which they're all already getting feisty. So that's a good sign. Um, it's actually really violent when they breed. But anyway, I'm gonna let them breed out in this tank and then I'm gonna move them back into that 36 gallon for 20 days to breed out again. And then I'll deal with these babies in here. And this tank doesn't have hydra, so hopefully I won't have as many problems. And not many people have bred these, have they? Uh, nope, me and Dean and Preston John and a guy in Germany. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And they just lay eggs in the mop there? No, they'll lay eggs all over that tank. Oh. I put the mop so they in don't there care. because <clears throat> I feel like it encourages things, but I don't really think it does anything. Hmm. They just throw, like, it gets real violent and she, he, she, yeah, she throws him all over the tank and sprays eggs, eggs everywhere. That's crazy, so. It gets real violent. That's wild. So we're actually in the kitchen now. These are your kitchen tanks. Yeah, I set these and up. Uh, randomly, so they're just like shoved into my kitchen. These are 40 gallon breeders? Yeah. 
40 breeders, got them on Craigslist, 20 bucks a piece. Sweet. Yeah. I like this setup with the tetras. Yeah, those are blue diamond, African blue diamond tetras. Well, most of them are. I think there's some stragglers in there that are a different species. Seem to be a bit shy. Yeah, they're very shy. There's also vampire shrimp in there and a snowball pleco. Huge pleco. Yeah, he's a stunner. Because plecos are cooler. Thanks to the bow front, what do you got down here? Uh, that's a mini pond. I'm using this to grow out some rope fish that are not old enough to be in my breeding program. They like to hide, but there's usually two of them over there and two of them underneath the sponge filter. The sponge filter is not connected. This is literally just water in a pond and some heaters. Air bubbler for some agitation. That's about it. So this is like your grow out then? Pretty much. There's four of them in there. <clears throat> Oh, I see one up in the middle of the branches. Yeah, they they eat, they camouflage. Very well. And come up and see you if you're chill. I must be chill. They're very sad. What about you? You like this puppy? Over here on your desk, you got a ten gallon, right? Oh, uh, that's a five and a half gallon. Oh, oops. It's a little baby tank. Uh, and it's, uh, got a bunch of baby plecos that are growing out. They're actually getting evicted today. And then this is also where the baby Bashirs are. And then there's some new baby Bashir eggs up here floating that I just pulled today. Mm-hmm. Oh, my wife. I ain't gonna be roll. What do you got in this bucket? You going fishing? <clears throat> That's a bucket of plecos. Yeah? Yeah. Those. They gotta go somewhere. Black somewhere. They got they're for sale. Want some plecos? See you like. Mmm, yummy. Albino and regular mm. long fin bristle nose plecos. On this table over here. Lots of things. This is the uh, random stuffs. And then this is my blue galaris. It's one of my favorite fish. Oh, he is a stunner. He's a hoss, too. He's, he's got to be like eight inches, right? Yeah, he's big. Damn, big boy. He's in the box. So Where'd you bring him? Uh, I got him from uh, the Kelly Carnival. Oh, yeah. I got out bid, but somebody bought him for me. What a nice guy to bid, out buy him for you. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Sometimes cool things happen if you join your local it, fish club. And you got eggs of these guys, too, right? Yeah. Sweet. What'd you do with those? There's some videos out there that you can watch. I don't know if you can link them in the description below. Um, I'll give you some names of some people that have done like breeding blue Galaris videos. You could link those in the description. Yeah, I know a couple. Yeah. Or you could just check out my breeding playlist. Yeah, yeah, there you go. But yeah, six six weeks. Now here we got the creme de la creme. This now I absolutely baby. love this setup. It's my baby. I love it. And it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh. Right? That's the noise it makes when you open it. But I'm gonna have to build another one because this was poorly designed. But that's okay. It's still beautiful. This is my rope fish pond. So what you got going on in this pond? Mm, everything. Ants, isopods, springtails, rope fish. Pearlweed. So this is like really healthy. Been there for a long time, pearlweed. Okay, good. Quit poking your oh, fingers oops. into my pearlweed mat, bro. What the? Uh, it's okay. Huh. Jeez. Okay. It's fine. This is just some pearlweed that was like in here that was getting some algae on it. So I threw it up here to see if it would like start growing. And it's actually got new growth on it that's a little bit different. Even mm -hmm. than like that. So we'll see what happens. And this is pearl weed, but it's all growing a little bit different. I got this weird spot happening. I'm not really sure why. I think it might be an airflow situation. I don't know. These are Anubises of all varietals. <laughs> Barteri. I think this is a Coffifolia. The Nana. There's like a green wavy in there. Oh, just a bunch of different immersed grown Anubis. Brazilian pennywort. These leaves are actually crypts, though, that are growing out of the water. See that different leaf? That's a crypt. Immersed grown crypt. Water wisteria that grows and grows and grows. That's a some kind of peace lily. Peace lily? Yeah. 
And then this is some kind of like a spider plant, I think. Those were given to me by uh, Tom Patterson, because he's awesome. And then that's a red tiger lettuce that was given to me by uh, my old boss. I heard he was awesome. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ended right there. Whoa, cool. And how big are those? Big. They're wild. You can move stuff if you want to. Go ahead. It's not going to hurt it. It's so weird to touch other person's tank. It's damn near black water. You ain't going to see in there. Yeah, you can see nothing. Uh -uh. Total black water. So why they like it. It's literally like a pond. Mm-hmm. Where'd you go? There he is. Here. Hang on. Oh, so cool. Two. Oh, yeah. What's up, buddy? Hi. Wow, those are cool. Just give her get a little you kisses. You won't stand. Little mm -hmm. little fish kisses. Just be chill. What is that? <laughs> That's cool. Look at the red on the tail. You won't see that in a fish store ever. No. Ever. All right, so there's Haley of Oddball Aquatics. You can check out her channel. She's got a channel on YouTube too. She's always showing off the pond what she's doing here. You never know what kind of shenanigans she's going to get herself into with this aquarium stuff. So, hope you all enjoyed this. You got anything to say to them? Live your best life. All right. Is that it? That's it. That's it. All right. Rope so fish. <laughs> all right. Hope you all enjoyed. Till next time, everybody. Peace. Have a great one.